Hey guys, how you doing? Teching101 here, and this is the first video I'm shooting on my new computer. Cue music! I'm not really trained to do the 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 can can. I don't know what that's called. When you're raising your legs up, not really working on whatever muscle I just used to do that. Also, it kind of defeats the purpose to wear the, the fleek long sleeve quarter zip up when you could clearly see my pajama pants. I don't care. These things are freaking comfy as shit. All right. So we got ourselves a new SPS and I have to look at these questions and really analyze them, not just to better make sense of the One Piece story, but every SBS that we get is basically just more and more insight into the psyche that is that is Oda Sensei. By the end of the story, we'll know more about him than even himself and his wife does. Did you know actually Oda's wife played Nami in a uh, One Piece play one time, and I guess that's how they met, and then that's how they ended up, well, I don't know if that's how they met, but that's definitely, like, they, he, she played that at one point, so is that, like, a thing, like, Oda wants to you know, his creation. I, I don't know. I'm not going there. Um, but uh, for SBS Volume 88, we didn't really get anything like earth shattering. Like we didn't get any crazy information really. Uh, but we did get some stuff that really just kind of world building elements mostly. Uh, also about boobs. It wouldn't be an SBS if it wasn't about boobs. And I put boobs in the thumbnail, so I should probably just hurry up and get to that part. You know, I really really was like kind of fidgety on what I was going to do there with that thumbnail but it's one of the questions is directly about the minx boobs so there they are okay fine and all of their 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 bushy glory you can take that a number of ways okay so the first question is are carrot and wanda's boobs furry or are they smooth and oda's response is i see well since their whole body he's doing this very i can tell he's sitting there at his desk like hmm well yeah that's actually a very good question you see their boobs are covered in fur so i guess they would be fur and then at that point he realizes that oh i have all these different questions to answer and i'm seriously pondering this one like it's one of the greatest philosophical arguments of our entire time and he's like wait a minute stop it what have you started with your simply perverted question i I, I don't really know, nor do I really wish to know, just the sheer number of uh, furry-related questions and, and, and fan letters that he has gotten since he introduced the Minx <laughs> into One Piece. Like, can I, I, I could just imagine, like, every anime fan who's also a furry probably sent him a letter at some point, and he's just getting an influx of them. But um, that's Oda-sensei, man. Every SBS has to include a reference to boobs at one point. We're not even upset at this point. We're not even, like... You know, it's very obvious you like talking about this. No, we all understand. You know, okay, we love talking about it too. You love talking about it. Let's talk about tits. All right, so I'm fine with that. Moving on to our next question. This was actually very relevant to moi because I just did a video about Charlotte Smoothie uh, last week, actually. No, two weeks ago. And um, this is a question relating to her abilities. So uh, smoothies squeeze drinks have unimaginable flavors. But there is one I know, Kirian. This is a big Japanese brewery name like Budweiser in America, but also it's the word for giraffe. Adults drink this, right? Do you like it, Oda-sensei? Uh, Oda and so this is referencing how... I, I was like, how does Smoothie's ability works when she juices people or things or even like inanimate objects? When she was at the wedding, she was like offering the, the patrons of the wedding like, hey, I can uh, offer you a refreshing beverage. Would you either want this lava rock drink? I also have a woman that stabbed someone like a hundred times. I, I could juice her for you. Or I have this very rare giraffe. And they, I think it was Stussy and, and Dufeld that asked for, for the giraffe. And so Smoothie just takes this poor giraffe and just rings it out, gives, gives it to them, and just, oh, it's such an interesting flavor. And I'm sitting there like, what does that taste like? Because if you're juicing a giraffe, unless the giraffe has, like, a special, like, carbonated beverage flowing through its veins, it should either, te uh, it should either taste like water or blood. There's really not a lot of other options here, you know? Um, but apparently that's the joke. That's the reference. It's referring to a big-time Japanese beer, uh, Kirian. And, and also that's also a way you can spell, or it can also mean giraffe. So that's the reference. It, if you wanted to know, if you were just such a diehard fan that you wanted to know what this giraffe tasted like, it tasted like booze. It tasted like beer. Okay, there you go. High-class beer. All right, and it's good to go on a hot day says says Oda. So thanks thanks for solving that mystery. I'm actually very interested in that. Moving on. Uh this is a good one. Who is the panda girl? 
not action, not panda woman. There's actually there's panda girl and there's panda woman. There's a difference. Panda woman lives on Amazon Lily. Panda girl was the girl that just vaguely looks like a panda who was at Big Mom's wedding. Uh, who is the panda girl with the split mouth that is at Big Mom's uh, wedding or who is Big Mom's subordinate? And Oda responds that yes, uh, that is actually the 19th daughter of the Charlotte family, Charlotte Poiré. Um, she has the same father as the minister of, bu of butter, Galette, and they are twins. So Galette is the 18th daughter of the family pictured here. Um, you know, family resemblance. I uh, can't really see much of uh, the chick with the P as a name because of her panda little hat and the little thing she's wearing. But, um, you know, she, she's uh, the uh, younger sister of Galette. And we don't really know much about Galette either, to be honest with you. She's the Minister of Butter. She's the 18th um, daughter. She maintains a very slim figure despite being the Minister of Butter. Um, and also she has a strange devil fruit. We don't know what it does yet, but it was able to control liquid and it was able to like buy, she was able to like bind Nami's arms and take out the climb attack with using this liquid to restrain her like handcuffs. Um, so I don't know if our, her younger sister has a devil fruit ability at all, but there you go. Just piecing together. I really hope at some point, maybe it's going to be, it would be probably in an SBS if anything, or maybe it's something that Oda's assistants would go and do for him. If he would just release like, an entire like from young uh, from oldest to youngest diagram of the entire Charlotte family, uh, even characters because I feel like Oda it, throughout his notes definitely has like a layout for each one of the Charlotte family siblings, you know, like the children of that family. I think he probably already has a general idea, um, and there's some that's been revealed. I think only in the anime only. So you can mess with that. You can make like a little chart. Like here they are. Like it's the same thing with Totland. We're probably not going to see every single island in Totland. In fact, I know we're not, but that doesn't mean Oda hasn't written them all out. He might have sat down one day and jawed out, like, okay, here are the 35 islands of Totland. I might use some of them, I might reference some of them, some of them might not ever be known, but at least I have them here in front of me. Because I, I think that's the kind of guy Oda is with his kind of completion he's got, you know? All right, so this is two questions. Um, hello, Oda. Please tell us the two generals, Smoothie and Cracker's age and height. And then the other question relating to this, I was immediately taken in by Charlotte Perro Sparrow. Oh, who doesn't? He does have a tongue that could keep those menstruations going all night long. I don't even know what I just said, but it sounds like kind of elegant. So let's go with that. The more I see him, the more I like him. Okay, seriously, who is this person? Please tell us his height and his favorite, least favorite food. Oh, okay. Out of all the Charlotte family members, Pero Sparrow is the one that's going to be your... Oh my god, he's like such a dreamboat. Okay, well, anyway, these are the answers. He gives us uh, Pero Sparrow, Cracker Smoothies, ages, and heights, uh, as well as what their dislikes and likes are. So, Charlotte Pero Sparrow is 50 years old. That makes perfect sense because we know that Big Mom started to give birth when she was 18 years old. I previously thought it was 20 when she started giving birth. That Mandela effect? Ooh, I don't know, but I always thought it was 20. Um, but no, it was very clearly stated that she's 68 years old now, and she's been constantly giving birth uh, since she was 18. So it's it's been a while, right? So I, I guess I was reading that the wrong way or whatever. But anyway, yeah. Um, so uh, Pero Sparrow's fifty years old. That makes sense. Now he might not still he might not be the eldest because Compote was also born. She's she's the the oldest daughter. So it's very likely that uh, Compote could have been born first. Uh, they, they I think they're both Strusen's kids because Strusen is so obviously the father of Pero Sparrow. Compote also kind of bears kind of like the similar, I, I don't know, they kind of look similar just because of their ages or whatever. They kind of look the same. But I, I think Pero Sparrow, I mean, I think Pero Sparrow and Compote are, you know, from the same dad, who I believe is Struson. Uh, he's 333 centimeters tall, and he likes candy and dislikes peppermint candy. That seems kind of contradictory there. Like, I, I just like candy in general, except this kind of candy. You know, it's strange. Uh, in case you're curious, my least favorite candy is licorice. Can't stand the stuff. I wish it would all disappear. Tastes like plastic to me. Charlotte Cracker, 45 years old, 307 centimeters tall, and likes biscuits. So they're, we're just going on. He's literally just like, the candy devil fruit user really likes candy. The cracker devil fruit user really likes crackers and biscuits. <laughs> Never would have figured that out. Uh. Dislikes kimchi. Oh, kimchi. I'm trying to think what I I know what I've heard that word before. I might have even possibly eaten that before, but I do not know off the top of my head what kimchi is. And uh, carbonated drinks. Okay, so it doesn't like soda. He doesn't like pop. 
pop or soda or cola? What do you call it? Charlotte Smoothie is 35 years old, 464 centimeters tall. She's a member of the Long Leg Tribe, so that makes sense. She's a pretty tall, she's a giant woman. And she likes smoothies. Derp. What about milkshakes? What about milkshakes, Oda? And dislikes meat. Oh, okay. Well, Luffy's got to fight her now. Like, this has got to go. I can totally see the confrontation going down there. Just be like, what's your favorite kind of food? Smoothies, but I hate meat. Oh, it's on now. You know, so that, that's, that's interesting. Little, little just details about the Charlotte family. I was always kind of interested in what, like, how old Pero Sparrow was. So that, that makes sense. Okay, so what's up next? Um... Hello in English. Okay, so this was written to Oda in English. I've always wanted to send Oda an SBS, but I have no idea how to, like, do that. Because I was afraid, like, I don't know how to write in Japanese, obviously. You know, my hiragana and katakana aren't that up to date. Um, you know, so I, I would have to write it in English, but I don't know if he would accept that. But he clearly gets letters all over the world. So screw it. I'm going to send a letter to Oda. I'm going to, a straight up letter, not an email, not a typed out thing. I'm going to get out an actual piece of fucking paper. Probably this paper. This is a one piece notebook. I bought at a con a few last month and I'm going to take this. I'm going to write him a letter and uh, it's going to be in English, but apparently he can, he has translators on staff or whatever. So yeah. Uh, the key is, though, don't ask him a question that's like, so, I can't write him a question that's like, hey, Oda, what's the deal with the Void Century? You know, because, you know, I have to ask him just just a little, like, character quirk or like, like, hey, what's the age of this character? Like, that kind of questions he seems to answer. Also, so, I have to throw boobs in there at some point. <laughs> Watch, I'll have, like, the one chance to have an, a question read by Oda, and I'm going to waste it on boobs. I'm going to be like, well, I could ask him about all these other things, but... What's koala's bra size? I would probably end up doing that. So, not the person you want asking a question. Th this was a cool one, though. Um, back in Volume 56, Oda answered a question involving the, the Straw Hats and what they would be doing in the real world. Like, if they were living in the real world, what countries would they be living in? So, um, here's what the worst generation would be doing in the, uh, the real world and where they would live at. Marshall D. Teach would be living in Somalia, and he would be an archaeologist. I'm immediately thinking that he is, like, the villain, um, in, like, The Mummy or something. Like, this, this, this freaking sweaty, fat, you know, shirt open, body hair guy. He's, a, he's the archaeologist, but he's trying to, I'm trying to recover the priceless gold from this tomb out in the middle of the desert so I could sell it on the black market and become rich with, like, drug money or something. You know, I can imagine he would be the villain in, like, a movie, where, like, opposite Tom Cruise or something. He'd be the big fat guy, drug kingpin or something. You know, he's also an archaeologist, but for, like, the worst reasons. And, um, at the end of the movie, he would get dropped out of a helicopter and explode or something, you know? Um, Eustace Captain Kidd would be living in Scotland, and he would be a weapons merchant. Don't the Scottish, don't, don't you guys have, like, that revolution? I don't know much about the Scots, but wasn't there a period in your, uh, the, the, uh, I'm Scottish, I don't know much about the Scots. Or is that Ireland? I don't know. There, there was a one point in one of your histories where there was, like, a lot of fighting and war or something, so that, that would probably make sense. Uh, so many Irish and Scottish people right now are like, oh my god, this guy doesn't know anything about the country of which his his family comes from. Oh my god. The fact that I, like, oh wait, Scotland, Ireland, those are like the same. Like, no, they're not. Not, not even close. Okay. Uh, but I'm just gonna move on after digging that grave. After all of my Scottish and Irish friends uh, are now no longer my friends. Um, uh, meanwhile, Killer would own a pasta shop. He would also be living in Scotland along with, with Kid. So, on one side you have Eustace Captain Kid. Come and check out my, my uh, rare assault rifle collection. I'll give you a sweet deal. And then after you're done picking that up, you can buy some sweet pasta al dente for my main man Killer next door. <laughs> it's, that's the front. That's the front. It's a pasta shop. But in the back room, that's where the weapons dealing goes down. Okay. Trafalgar Law would be from Germany, and he would be a doctor. I don't think that's... There's really nothing really to bring up with that. Uh, we all know why that's the case. Uh, moving on, Scratchman Up, who would be living in China. He would be DJing. Also, pretty obvious there. His whole aesthetic is Chinese, and he's also, uh, you know, sauna. He's a music guy, so there you go. Um, oh, I missed one. Capone Beige would be from Italy. He's a mafia don, makes sense, and he would own a shoe shop, which I also think would be a cover for something. It's like, yeah, yeah, check out these loafers, they're really nice. Meanwhile, I was like, Father, there's a, there's a, 
uh, mind me just a second here. And he goes in the back room and, like, shoots a guy and comes back. He's like, yeah, so those loafers look pretty good on you. The price starts at... <laughs> Okay. Um, who's next? Uh, Hawkins. Hawkins would be from Egypt, and he would be an interior designer. This has actually already been stated before, that Hawkins has, is a fan of interior design, so I imagine his ship is very feng shui. So that's pretty cool. And also the tarot, uh, the, the cards that he reads from, the tarot cards, uh, that originated from Egypt. And I know that because I watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusader, so that's the case there. X Drake would be from Turkey. Interesting choice. And would be a zookeeper. I don't know why, but I felt X Drake should be Spanish for some reason. I don't know why. Who's up next? Uh, Jewelry Bonnie would be from Australia and would own a pizza shop. Not a very good business venture for her because she would probably end up eating all of her wares. Next up is Arouge, and he would be from India, the whole Buddhist monk aesthetic, and also would own a cabaret club. Also kind of weird. I thought it would be like a Tibetan monk or something, but okay, I guess that you would have to be living in Tibet to be a Tibetan monk. So, yeah. But anyway, cab Cabaret Club. All right, so he's like this suave dude wearing a suit. You know, all right, fine, sweet. This is my proper imagining of them. Well, thank you, Oda, for giving us that insight into how the, the worst generation would operate in our world. Next question. Lately, there's been a lot of tall guys like Katakuri and Doflamingo coming out one after another. How about, how many meters tall is the shortest giant? Okay, so this is a really interesting question. Uh, Oda kind of goes into detail now on what the whole height is. And we also get the height of Big Mom, which is something I've been wondering for a very long time. Big Mom is 8 meters 80 centimeters. So she's taller than Whitebeard. I believe Whitebeard was like 7 meters or some such. Um, just ridiculously tall. Like twice as tall as like, a, like several times bigger than an average human from our world right however he states that the uh height of the shortest giant is 12 meters the shortest real giant he clarifies so obviously not including like a half human half giant offspring not sure how that would work but probably um and this is also something to bring to bring up because um it was stated i believe in the the blue deep data book that uh bastille who is the marine vice admiral that went to dress rosa he's the one with the mask that got his face crushed by uh, sabo's dragon claw um it was stated he was a giant in that data book, and he was very clearly not not 12 meters tall. Like, he wasn't even close to being as tall as Big Mom. Uh, maybe, like, slightly shorter than Whitebeard. I mean, he was a tall dude, Bastille, but he was nowhere near being 12 meters. And um, in this, I think it basically debunks that. I don't know if Oda was the one that actually sat down and wrote the entire data book, or if it was something included in there, like, erroneously or something. So, uh, if that was the case, then that might just be a mistake on Oda's part, or it might be a mistake on whoever wrote that data book. Um, you know, things might have gotten crossed somewhere, but Bastille, uh, from what we know so far with this criteria, 12 meters minimum, that is not a, he's not a real giant. Uh, maybe he's a half-breed, that might make sense. Um, and he states, the full length of a large bus or truck is about 12 meters meters so that gives you a general idea like if you found a giant sleeping on the ground like even the shortest giants in the world um i don't know if he's referring to that as like an adolescent giant teenager real adult like the the the, the shortest real adult giant is 12 meters i i'm assuming he meant adult because otherwise i don't know why he would really qualify like if it was a child or it would obviously be shorter than that probably but yeah big mom eight meters 80 centimeters and kaido is probably even bigger than that so kaido is probably if kaido is not a giant he is definitely giant size so at least we now got a we got a bare minimum to work with now okay what's next uh in chapter 883 you revealed katakuri's shocking true face <gasps> So is it Oda, uh, Oda's policy to not draw perfect characters? Incidentally, because of this, I feel closer to Katakuri. If he has to carry around such an image, it would really build up stress. Yeah, you think so, right? After like 40-something years on this planet, even after becoming the strongest invincible man in all of Totland, anybody even sees your weird pelican mouth, all of a sudden people are like, You freaking loser! Hori, hori, hori! All that respect we had you for literally our entire lives just instantly disappears. Because we're horrible fucking pieces of dog shit. Yeah! Um, but Oda goes on to says, How nice. Uh, explosive laughter at Katakuri. Explosive laughter! You ask if it's a policy, but perfect people are so boring. People have other... Uh, uh, pe people love other people's flaws. Uh, and that makes sense. Like, if, if Oda really did depict Katakuri as this, just this immovable object, invincible fighter, absolutely, absolutely flawless. Would you really find him as interesting as you do 
I, I think he's one of the best antagonists in the story, you know, and, and I, I, I stand by that so far. Even though he's new, I stand by that. Uh, when I did that Horoween top tw uh, 13 One Piece villains and antagonists, he, he got number seven, and he was a relatively new character at that point. So, yeah, but would you find him just as interesting if he's just like, I'm a perfect fighter? Even if Luffy still beat him at the end of the day, he's like, oh, you're not. But all the things with his backstory and being made fun of and everything, and I hope we get more from that. Uh, next question, I like this one. It's, uh, where is the young master right now from Sama Prince? Young master, of course, referring to Doflamingo. And, and Oda doesn't give a really long response to this. He doesn't give a joke answer, like, wouldn't you like to know? Or it's like, he's in the Valley of Kittens right now. No, he just comes right out and says, level six of Impel Down. Yeah, and I understand why some people might have been confused by this, because last time we saw Doflamingo, he was, um, you know, uh, being carted off, you know, he's all chained up with the Sea Prism Stone in the bottom of the ship, taken to Impel Down, but Jack attacked the, the convoy, taking him there. We're gonna move this trucking convoy across the New World Sea. We're gonna take this pink flamingo to the government's keep. Convoy. I just came up with that off the top of my head. Okay, great. But, um, they were, you know, Jack failed in doing it. He got the shit beat out of him. Um, you know, because the former fleet admiral Sengoku and the great tactician Suru and one of the admirals Fujitora plus an entire plethora of marines were present on this on these on this convoy so yeah Jack got the shit beat out of him but it was like okay well did they make it to impel down or were they damaged too no so uh yeah Doflamingo's currently in level six I don't know if that means he's going to be playing a role in the series later on at all I mean he'll we'll definitely see him again um and there was another question involving like uh would uh, Suru really, you know, fulfill the agreement that Doflamingo's like, bring me a newspaper every day. But, you know, he states, oh yeah, Suru wouldn't obviously do that, but Doflamingo has connections. We know that there's ways you can, you know, squirm around, impel down, you can get around and shit. You know, New Kama Land is a perfect example of that. So, Doflamingo will be getting his resources, trust me. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if in like literally two weeks he was completely in control of all of level six. Like all of the prisoners down there just bowed when he spoke, you know, because he's got a silver tongue, he's got a way with words, and he knows how to threaten pretty damn well. So that's interesting. Uh, this is another good one. What does Luffy consider as a beauty? If Alvida is called a beauty, why aren't others beauties? Like Nami, Robin, and Hancock consider beauties. Okay, I believe this is a moment when back in Logtown, because that's the only time Luffy's ever directly confronted Alvida while she was in her, you know, her actual hot form, you know, after eating the slip slip fruit. And I believe Luffy does refer to her as a beauty. Well, if that's the case, why doesn't he call Nami, Robin, or Hancock, or any of the other ridiculously hot women that Luffy now has as part of his harem, um, you know, V, Rebecca, um, uh, Shirahoshi, you know, like, why doesn't he refer to them as beauties? And this is interesting. Uh, Otis says, he did indeed call Alvida a beauty. However, when normal people say a beauty, they mean it as a compliment. But in Luffy's case, it's more of a classification. So when Luffy says beauty, he doesn't mean it like, oh, you're so beautiful, I'm complimenting at you. He means it in like, um... You know, like, how in Pokemon you have, like, different different trainer classes? Like, Nerd Kyle wants to battle. Lass uh, Henrietta wants to battle. It's Beauty Courtney wants to battle. You know, like, beauty is a classification, not a compliment. And Luffy understands whether a face is pretty or not. He just doesn't care about that. So, I guess the, the funny thing I, I'm, I'm, you know, imagining this as, you know... Luffy's like, who are you? And Alvida's like, I'm the beauty, Alvida. And Luffy's like, oh, she's a beauty. I guess that's her title. I'll use, okay, hi, beauty. Hi, beauty, Alvida. I'll just use that as a title, like Mr. or Mrs. or Doctor or whatever. I'll just use that. So that's, that's kind of cool. Right, so moving on, I think this is the last question we have here. Uh, yeah, this is about the One Piece mailing, um, you know, system they have. Now, obviously, you have Den Den Mushies that can communicate long distances like a phone, but what if you wanted to send mail to someone? Like, what if you wanted to send a birthday card? If you lived in the West Blue and wanted to send a birthday card to your your grandson that lived in the in the uh, East Blue or the South Blue, the South Blue, you would have to cross the red line. Even in the North Blue, you'd still have to cross the New World to get from West to North. So how, how does that work in the One Piece world, you know? Uh, if you want to send a letter. They bring up the Carrier Bats. If you remember correctly, the Carrier Bats are the ones uh, very briefly seen, just seen really once. Um, they're the thing that brought Buggy the, 
the letter of, of invitation to the warlords. The world government uses them. Obviously, you have the news coup. Uh, but I would imagine there's, like, the, the news coup wouldn't be able to fly over the red line. This might be, like, a kind of thing in Game of Thrones with, like, the ravens. They send one raven to one location. All right, and then, okay, move to that one. And then that one goes to another one. Okay, move the letter over here. This one's going to the south blue. This one's going to the west blue. Might have something like that going on, that kind of system. We don't really go too into detail because the question is more about how to pirates communicate outside of using, like, Den Den Mushies and shit. Oda states, I don't want to see pirates getting along like that. It doesn't happen. So, okay, you don't want to see, like, Shanks writing a letter to, like, just... I mean, he did write a letter to Whitebeard, but he had to have Rockstar deliver it. It was, like, a very weird thing. He had, like, an actual messenger for that one. He doesn't want Shanks to be like, Whitebeard, I think that you should really stop Ace from chasing after Blackbeard. It's not, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna end well. He's gonna die. Sign Shanks. P.S. Big fan of how you destroyed an entire marine fleet last week. Little sideways smiley face. And then puts it in a letter, gives it to a bat, and it flies and drops on Whitebeard's lap. Just like, okay, let's check out the mail today. Bill, Bill. Uh, the government hates me. No shit. You know, like, I, so obviously stuff like that would be a little bit too weird. Um, carrier bats are mainly used as means of contact by the world government. For private letters, one can be negotiated with the news coup to deliver it. There's also a private company called Small Bird Delivery, but they have a small space and a short distance. Albatross Delivery does long distance, but there's a lot of things they won't deliver. You know, it's just... It's little things like this. Oda might have only put, like, five minutes into thought. But he actually sat down and came up with, like... Like, there's all these different messaging services in the world. Like, the, what we have today, we have a shit ton of stuff. Like, just in the U.S., we have the USPS, we have the United States Post Office, we also have UPS, which I actually don't know what UPS, United Postal Service, I guess that's what that stands for. FedEx, you know, Federal Express. You know, we have all these different ways of delivering mail... So Oda figures, yeah, there would probably be equivalents to that, and some are more prevalent in some regions, some are not. Some are, you know, more prone to long distance, others are not, you know, and there's obviously stuff they won't deliver. You know, if you're a pirate with this albatross delivery, it's like, I want to send this rare devil fruit long distance, you know, probably not going to deliver that. Um, it'd probably be very dangerous, you know, if it got into the wrong hands. Uh, but even if it's something very just, like, here's small bird delivery, and here's albatross, you know, like, like there's probably a logo for albatross cross delivery. I, I don't know, but it's just little things like that. I love the world building, okay? It's very much appreciated. Mail services outside of the government just aren't that developed. For deliveries between pirates, it's common to use boats, like when Shanks just rolled right up to Whitebeard. They, or when even Rockstar. Rockstar was sent. He had to have a boat to get there. They don't have addresses either. Obviously, they're always moving around. I mean, unless you're like Big Mom, unless you're like Yonko status, and you got like a, you know, an entire country. But I don't think you could just take this to the news coup and be like, send this letter to Big Mom, you know, whole, one whole cake chateau, whole cake island, Totland, you know, like whatever area code Totland's in. I, I don't think you could do that. You know, that thing would probably get shot down the second it entered the freaking airspace. Um, um, they don't have addresses either, so parting ways with people is heavier than we can imagine. Yeah, because it's like, oh, we get along with each other, but, you know, the world is like 90% water, and flying machines don't exist yet, except if you're Enaru. So, um... Yeah, obviously that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be too easy to do that. You know, when you leave, you're gone. You might not see each other ever again. Kind of like high school. But anyway, yeah, that's that's the SBS. I uh, kind of went really long with this one, but I had a lot of stuff to say. It seems. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't think any of these questions were fake. Like the last one I did, I, I messed up that question when I read the wiki at the worst possible time. I waited about a week or two for this one. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what you thought about the uh, the SBS, what things you liked, what things you didn't like. Um, and uh, if you were going to write a letter to Oda, what would you ask him? And obviously, like, a real letter to Oda, not like a question to Oda, like, you know, what's the will of D mean? Obviously, Oda is not going to answer that in a fucking SBS. Obviously, that's going to be revealed in the story. So character heights, character ages, what do you want to know about this particular area? Like, Like, islands that we've passed up, like, if you have a question about, like, the politics or something of Fishman Island. You could probably ask him that, and he'll probably answer it. He's like, oh yeah, Fishman Island, yeah, I could tell you a little bit more about that. Stuff like of that nature. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Techie101 signing out. See you guys.